Shabbat Shalom, Body of Messiah, Mark Pulley here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida, bringing you another teaching from Yahweh's laws and commandments. Well, Paradise, Florida, for some people, isn't too much of a paradise this past week because it's been cloudy, windy, and today we're supposed to get rain. And being that we've had a drought for a summer, um, it would be great if Yahweh graced us with rain. So I'm grateful on this Sabbath that it rained last night a little bit, and hopefully today we'll get two or three, four inches as they are guessing. So I pray your Sabbath is well. I pray you are well. I want to thank you for tuning in to our channel, to our ministry. We appreciate it. I appreciate and am thankful for all those that support our ministry, that pray for our ministry and pray for us. <clears throat> it really makes a difference. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Today we want to continue on our journey concerning Yahweh is one. The very first commandment that Yeshua said that we were to remember was, Hear, O Israel, Deuteronomy 6, 4, Yahweh is one, or in our language we'd say there is only one Yahweh, and that is the Father. Yahshua is not Yahweh. Yahshua is not an Elohim. He's, he called himself the Son of Man, not not God in the flesh. He called him the son of Adam. He called himself the son of Adam. Um, and we're going to look at a few more scriptures here to keep building the foundation of the first commandment that we are not to have any idols before us. And we are to focus in on that Yahweh is one. There's only one Yahweh, one supreme being, one almighty. And all of Israel, <clears throat> from the beginning of Genesis, even through Yeshua's days, the disciples' days, understood this. There was no confusion. Now, the Jews got a little confused. They thought, Yahshua was calling himself equal to Yahweh, but he wasn't. He was saying that he was the son of Yahweh. And a son does not make himself equal to his father, whether that's in the natural, like I'm a son to my dad, Austin, and I'm not equal to him now. He passed away in 1968. You know, my brother, he got to know my dad a lot longer. He's his, he's his son, but he wasn't equal to my dad either. And so it is in the natural, it is in the spiritual. The son is not equal to the dad. The dad owns it all. He's the supreme head of the household, if you would. And Yahweh, the Father, is the supreme being, is the Almighty. And we have to understand this. Otherwise, when we read certain scriptures in the New Testament, we're going to get confused. Because we're going to think it's saying something that it is not saying. But when you understand the Torah, when you understand the prophets, when you understand the Psalms, you will then understand whatever is written in the second writings or the New Testament. Now something that I live by, and I encourage others to live by it, if you read something in the second writings or the New Testament, and it confuses you because it seems to contradict something 
from the Torah or the Prophets or the Psalms. I would encourage you just to put it on the shelf and keep studying the Torah, the Prophets, and the Psalms, and the Second Writings, and at some point, clarity will come to you by Yahweh, through His Spirit, so that you will understand what Yahweh is trying to communicate. Now, something to understand about the word Elohim is it can refer to man, like when Thomas said, when Yahshua showed him his hands, said, put your fingers in, in here and see for yourself. And Thomas said, my Elohim. And he wasn't referring to Yahshua as being a God or being Yahweh. He was referring to him as a man because Elohim, in, when you have to read the context, can refer to gods, meaning um, pagan gods. It can be referring to the supreme being, Yahweh. It can be referring to demons, angels. And in many cases, it can be referring to a human being. They called human beings Elohim. So you have to be very discerning and not look at it through pagan Catholicism, Christianity eyes, but through a Hebraic perspective. Why would Thomas call Yahshua Elohim when he knew that Yahshua was the Messiah and the son of Elohim? So you need to ask yourself that question. He wouldn't be calling him Elohim like Yahweh Elohim, like he's a supreme being. He called him Elohim as a human. Now, we know Yahshua was human. He was the son of man, born of a virgin. We also know that Yahweh, and this is, this is where we always have to defer to, the Torah says that Yahweh is one. How did Yahshua overcome the tempter, the trickster, in Matthew 4 and Luke 4? He focused on what thus saith Yahweh in the Torah. And that's how you and I need to be. We need to have a foundation of what the Torah says. And I know there are a lot of people that say, you know, and they believe in, in his Hebrew name, but many of them still have a lot of leaven from the Pharisees inside of them and in their thinking and belief structures that they received when they were in Christianity. And that has not yet been purged out. Now, one of the things that I came to understand last Feast of Unleavened Bread, that Yahweh was going to purge the body of Messiah of the leaven that is still within us. That leaven that we may not have recognized as leaven or wrong teaching or doctrines from man. And in this past year, it's been awesome. So many of the things that Yahweh has revealed to me that I have taught you on this channel has been for the purpose of purging us of wrong patterns of thinking. Purging us of the leaven that we did not recognize maybe as leaven in our lives and in our belief structures and then he be and as we received it as we've accepted what the torah says then he is able to build us 
upon the foundation of Yahweh's instructions, the prophets, the Psalms, so on and so forth. And so it is very important that we become like a sponge and we just absorb everything that comes from Torah, that comes from the prophets, that comes from the Psalms, that comes from Yeshua's own lips and the disciples' teachings that are in line with the Torah. And the majority, if not all of their writings, are in line with the Torah. You just have to have an understanding of the Torah in order to understand what the apostles and the Messiah were trying to communicate to those that were listening. Israel <clears throat> all had an understanding of Deuteronomy 6.4, which says, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our Elohim, Yahweh is one. That is the foundation that we have to build off of, that we have to live by, that we have to discern everything else that we have believed in to be biblical. If it doesn't line up with this foundation, if it doesn't line up with the first commandment, which is that Yahweh is one. Yeshua said this is the very first commandment, and the second was to love your neighbor as yourself. And so we need to be like a sponge. We need not to be stiff-necked or hard-hearted or like the Pharisees, where they held on to their belief system even when the Messiah was trying to correct them and teach them what thus saith Yahweh. Now, when you are stubborn like that, the scripture says that you are committing idolatry. Why? You are putting yourself, your beliefs above what thus saith Yahweh. Now as a pastor, I personally would rather minister to five people that are like sponges, that just are hungry and thirsty and just absorb all that you teach them from the Torah, from the prophets, and from the Psalms and from the second writings. Instead of having 5,000 people that are stiff-necked, that are resistant, and that don't want to change. And see, when we say we're Torah observant, when we say we are of Israel, we need to make sure we truly are. And that if something is written in the Torah, we need to receive it. We need to accept it as fact. And whatever else we believed up to that point, we need to put it on the shelf until Yahweh either totally confirms, yep, you need to let that totally go and get purged out of your life. Or you need to see it from a different light. So we're going to go over a few scriptures. Nehemiah 9.6. We talked about this uh, last time. It says, you alone are Yahweh. You, singular, not plural, as in a duality of Elohims, but you, singular, have made the heaven and the heaven of heavens with all their hosts, the earth and everything on it, 
the seas and all that is in them, and you, singular, preserve them all. And why I'm saying singular is many people believe that the word Elohim is plural, and it is. There are 2,300 references to the word Elohim in the scriptures. A little over 2,000 of them are in the singular form. And a little over 200 of them are in the plural form. In Genesis 1, it's the singular form. Here, it's the singular form. In John 17, verse 3, out of Yeshua's own mouth, he said, And this is life eternal, that they may know you, and he's referring to Yahweh, singular, the only true Elohim, singular, and Yahshua, Messiah, whom you sent. So he, he Yeshua, doesn't call himself Yahweh, doesn't call himself a um, Elohim or God, but he's, he separates Yahweh from the Messiah. He separates Yahweh from the, from the Messiah. There's Yahweh, the only true Elohim, the Messiah said. Okay, get it, the Messiah said that. The Son, Yahshua said that. You, Yahweh, the only true Elohim, and Yeshua Messiah, whom you sent. All right? Here's another good verse. Psalm 83, verse 18. These are just all uh, refreshers. And then we'll get to what I want to share today. That they may know that you, singular, whose name alone is Yahweh, are the Most High over all the earth. So here the writer is saying that Yahweh alone is the Most High over all the earth. He is the Almighty. All right, uh, let's look at another one. Isaiah 37 and verse 16. It says, O Yahweh of hosts, Elohim of Israel, singular, the one, singular, who dwells between the cherub, you, singular, are Elohim, you alone, singular, of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made the heaven and the earth. So this is very clear that Yahweh is the creator. And I know some people get confused when they read John 1 because it looks like Yeshua is saying that he was there in the beginning. But you have to understand when John, Mark, and Luke talked about the beginning, what beginning were they referring to? They were referring to the beginning of Yeshua's ministry. They were referring to the beginning of Yeshua's ministry and where it says, and the word, that word, word, means the voice of Yahweh or the commandments of Yahweh. So it should read, in the beginning was the commandments of Yahweh. And that makes sense with Torah. That doesn't conflict with these verses. But when you put in there that the word means physically that the Messiah, that conflicts with what the prophets, the Psalms, and the Torah says. So it cannot mean that. And when it says that in him was life, and yes, through Yeshua you receive life, but that life comes from the Father. And then when it says that the Word became flesh, it is the voice of Yahweh, the commandments of Yahweh, became 
a human being. That's literally what it means in the, in the original language. And see, when you understand the scriptures from a Hebraic perspective, it all makes sense. Never should the second writings or the New Testament conflict with the Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms. If it seems like it conflicts, it is because you don't have the proper understanding of the times in which they lived, of the Torah, the prophets, the Psalms, or you have just been taught something that lines up more with uh, Christian paganism, trinity, uh, plurality of gods, instead of the Israel's view that there is one Elohim. And the scripture clearly says there is only one Elohim. All right, let's jump over into Matthew 16, verse 16. And we're going to look at something Yeshua said and something Peter said about the Messiah. All right, Matthew 16, verse 16. Peter said about Yeshua because Yeshua asked them, Who do men say I, the Son of Man, am? Notice he didn't say, who I am, who do men say that I am, being that I am Elohim, or I am Yahweh? No, he didn't say that. He said, who do men say that I am, being the son of Elohim, being the son of man? And Peter said, some say, you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. And then Yeshua said, Whom do you say that I am? And that's where we pick up. Peter said about Yeshua, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living Elohim. He did not say you are Yahweh. He did not say, you are Elohim. He did not say, you are equal to Yahweh. He did not say, you are the second person of the Trinity. Why? Because Peter knew and understood that there is only one Elohim, and his name is Yahweh. When... <coughs> That's, that's something that we need, to, we need to understand. Peter, Peter called the Messiah the son of Elohim. I'm just looking at this. He said... You are the son of the living Elohim. And Yeshua answered unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. So he said, Yeshua said to Peter, that it was Yahweh that revealed this to Peter. So, when you understand, when you understand that Yahweh is one, and there is only one Yahweh, and that Yeshua is not an Elohim, but he's the Son of Elohim and all through Paul's writings when he greets the le the people in the letters like Corinth, Ephesians, Romans, he greets them from the Father and the Messiah, the Son 
of Yahweh. He never calls Yahshua Elohim. He never calls Yeshua uh, a, a G-O-D. He calls him the Messiah. Just like Yeshua called himself. Now, when you have that understanding, it is revealed to you by Yeshua's Father, Yahweh, in heaven. When you don't have that understanding and you think that Yeshua is Yahweh, which I used to be under that persuasion, and I used to think that Yeshua was and was Elohim. But I was corrected when I looked at all the verses in the Torah. And when you say you're Torah observant, that means you live according to the Torah. And if the Torah says something, that a few verses that you misread and misunderstood conflict with it, you then have to defer to what the Torah and the prophets say. And when you look at out of Yeshua's own mouth, there are so many verses, and we're going to go, maybe not through all of them, but we're going to go till Yahweh says, you, you've, you've established this foundation enough and it's time to move on so until then we're going to keep journeying into the subject of Yahweh is one all right now here's something else interesting in Matthew 27 and verse 54 when they crucified Yahshua on the stake it says that the captain who crucified him, he said, truly, this was the son of Elohim. He didn't say this was Yahweh. He didn't say this was Elohim. But he said this was the son of Elohim. Where did the captain know this from how did he understand and how did he see by looking at Yeshua on the stake and the price he paid how did he see and understand that Yeshua was the son of Elohim now this is just what came to my understanding because it was common knowledge in Jerusalem and in Israel that Yeshua was the Messiah the son of the living Elohim everybody understood that meaning the people of Israel now we know that the Pharisees and many of the Jews who hated Yeshua did not understand that but the the everyday believer and the common folk they understood that again it he didn't say he was Yahweh all right now turn to um, Philippians chapter 2 Philippians chapter 2 and this will help you in verse 6 it says well verse 5 says let this mind be in you which was also in Messiah Yeshua, who being in the form of Elohim, doesn't say he was Elohim, he was in the form, in the image, like you and I are made in the image of Elohim. That's what it says in, Ge in Genesis chapter 1, that we have been made in the image and the likeness of Elohim. 
thought it not robbery to be equal with Yahweh. Now, a lot of people, that's where they get all, see right, right there, it says it, it said that's one verse. It didn't say he was Yahweh. It didn't say he was Elohim. All right? But and then it says, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. So he was made in the likeness of men. He couldn't be Elohim because he was made in the likeness of men. So you have to read the whole thing and take things in context. And being found in fashion as a man. So what's the context here? It's describing Yahshua as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death on the stake. Wherefore, or because of this, Yahweh also has highly exalted him. Now, think about it. If he was equal to Yahweh, if he was an Elohim, then Yahweh couldn't have exalted him because he would have already been exalted. But it doesn't say that. It says that Yahweh, because of Yeshua the human, humbled himself and went through what he went through for you and I. That Yahweh exalted him, promoted him to a position he never had before. And gave him a name which is above every name. And we know that the name that is above every name is Yahweh's name. And because Yahshua, Yahshua means Yah is salvation, when you call upon Yahshua's name, you are literally calling upon Yahweh's name. They are one and the same. Yahshua has a name that represents Yahweh. And he gave him that name, and he promoted the name of Yahshua to be above every name that, that man has. He's not, it's not above the name of Yahweh, but it's above every name that is named upon the face of the earth. So Yahweh exalted Yahshua and gave him a name that is above every name. So you can pray by the power of Yahweh's name. You can pray by the power of Yeshua's name. It's one and the same. Me, I just, it's because it's what was revealed to me. I pray by the power of Yahweh's name. But I have no problem with others praying by the power and by the authority of Yeshua's name because Yahweh gave Yeshua after the resurrection all power and all authority upon the face of the earth. And that is why you can confess your sin and Yeshua will forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And you might think, well, I thought Yahweh's the only one that can forgive you of your sin. And that is accurate. But Yahweh has given all power and authority to his son, Yahshua. So whether you call upon Yahshua or you call upon Yahweh, in Yeshua's name, or just by the power of Yahweh's name, and you confess and turn away from your lawlessness, Yahweh will cleanse you 
through his son, Yahshua, through what he did on the stake for you and I. So, praying in Yahshua's name, being forgiven through Yahshua's name, is equal to praying in Yah's name. And so, that's just a little nugget. All right. Then it says, Then at the name of Yahshua, every knee shall bow. Now, something that's interesting is this verse Paul is quoting and explaining how Yahweh exalted Yahshua. And again, he's teaching people that are just coming to the faith and coming out of paganism. This verse comes out of Isaiah 45, verse 23, which says, I, Yahshua, I mean, excuse me, I, Yahweh, have sworn by myself, Yahweh. See, every time you read the I or me, um, or myself, you need to see who the context is referring to, and almost every time it's referring to Yahweh. So, I have sworn by myself, Yahweh, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return, that unto me, Yahweh, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall swear. Or confess so Paul is quoting from the prophets see if you don't understand about the Torah and the prophets and have that foundation in your life when you read the second writings or the New Testament you will think something that is not 100% accurate. And see, when Yahweh said we are not to have any Elohims before us, if we make the son of Yahweh an Elohim, we are committing adult idolatry. We are placing him, and many Christians in Catholicism have placed Yahshua either equal or above Yahweh. And we need to be careful and not to do that. And it says, and that every tongue should confess that Yeshua the Messiah is master to the glory of Yahweh the Father. So we see here that the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul is teaching about Yahshua and Yahweh, how Yahweh exalted him as a human. And we understand Hebrews 1, verse 2, and uh, verses 1 and 2, where it talks about that. Uh, in various ways, Yahweh spoke to our fathers, me meaning Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or in the, in the first writings, the Old Testament, the Tanakh, through the prophets. So it was Yahweh speaking through the prophets. And then he says, in these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son. The Son did not speak in the Tanakh. He didn't start speaking till he was born of Miriam. And he became a human. And that's when he began to speak. And that's when Yahweh didn't need to speak anymore because he had his Son speak on his behalf. That's very important to understand that. All right. Now, let's look 
in John 20, and I believe we'll end here. John 20 and verse 17. So in Philippians, we see that Yeshua was exalted by Yahweh and promoted to a place, to a position that he had never had before. And that was seated at the right hand of the Father. Now, we're going to get into, maybe next time, talking about some other things that will help you understand this. All right? In John 20, verse 17, it says, Yeshua calls Yahweh his Father and his Elohim. Do you have that verse with you? Go ahead, read it. Yeshua said to her, Do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and my Elohim and your Elohim. Okay, now this is when Yeshua appeared to Mary. And he said, Don't touch me yet, because I have not yet ascended to my father mm -hmm. and to your father. Then notice what he says, to my Elohim and your Elohim. Again, Yeshua, if there was ever a time for him to say that he was an Elohim, this would have been it. But he didn't. He remained consistent with what he said previous mm -hmm. and what is written in the Torah and the prophets and the Psalms. So if you choose to go in another direction and you choose to add to the scriptures concerning Yeshua, what they clearly are not saying, right. you then are adding to the scriptures. And we need not to do that. And it to me, it is so clear that Messiah Yahshua is not Yahweh. And he is not Elohim, but the son of Elohim. The son of man born of a woman who Yahweh exalted at his right hand, to his right hand. To me, this is basic Hebraic foundation understanding have you ever asked yourself where did this teaching of Yeshua being Yahweh or Elohim come from it came from paganism it came from Catholicism and Christianity all of Israel believes and still believes that there there is only one Yahweh, one Elohim, not two, and not three. Many have brought their pagan beliefs from Christianity into the Hebrew faith and have tried to pass them off by taking a few scriptures and only focusing on them and they do not accept, they do not look at, they do not receive all of what Torah and the prophets and Yeshua say. And see, we need to be purged of all leaven of the Pharisees. And what that means is wrong teaching, false teaching. And it's false teaching to say that Yeshua is Yahweh in the flesh. It's false teaching to say that Yeshua pre-existed. Mm -hmm. It is also false teaching to say that Yeshua is an Elohim or is God. If you are a true Torah believer, please look at 
what all of Torah says about Yahweh being one. That there's only one Yahweh. And then there's the son of Yahweh. Please look at all of what the prophets say. And what the Psalms say. And what Yeshua himself said. And what the disciples said. Now if what you believe conflicts with the first part of the book, to be real blunt, your belief is tainted. And there's something inaccurate in it. And it needs to be purged and you need to have your minds renewed to Yahweh's instructions. Yahweh never called Yeshua a Elohim or a G-O-D. He called him his only begotten son. All the New Testament agrees with the Torah Psalms and the prophets and what Yeshua said and like I said before if our understanding doesn't agree with <clears throat> doesn't excuse me doesn't agree with this fact then you're missing something something is inaccurate now here real quickly I'll show you something I saw in the book of Ephesians that really even drives home the fact that Yahweh is one and I never saw this before till the other day and it's in Ephesians 4, and starting in verse 4, it says there is one body. One body. Why one? Yahweh is one. And one spirit. There's not two spirits. There's only one Ruach HaKodesh. There's only one spirit. And again, notice the word one in all these. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one master, meaning Yahshua, one faith, the Hebrew faith, one baptism or immersion, not two, not three, not five, not a trinity, not plurality, one Elohim. There you go. One Elohim. And Father of all. Who is above all. Through all. And in you all. Again. The Apostle Paul. Reiterates. And he reiterates the Torah. He reiter reiterates the Psalms. The Prophets. And Yeshua's own words, that there is only one Elohim, not two. Now, if anybody, you know, a lot of people say that, that Christianity wants to say that Paul taught about the Trinity. Why did he say one Elohim and father of us all, of all of us that are in Torah, that are in the Hebrew faith? And again, Paul is teaching to people that just came out of paganism, pagan idolatry, and pagan sin. And he said there's only one Elohim, one faith, one baptism, one master, one hope, one body, and one spirit. There's not a duality, and there's not a trinity. And to me, this just reiterates 
about Hero Israel, Yahweh is one foundation. We have to have that foundation because we can see that foundation all throughout the scriptures. All throughout the scriptures, it is clear. It is clear. <clears throat> and we see, as we read at the very beginning, there is only one true Elohim, not a duality, not a trinity. <clears throat> and so I pray this helps you and trying to be as good of a master builder and building upon the right foundation which is the Torah, the prophets, the Psalms and Yahshua I pray this strengthens your foundation concerning Yahweh is one. And that through just this teaching, that it just reiterates, Hallelujah. not just from the Tanakh, but also from the second writings, that Yeshua himself the Apostle Paul called Yeshua mm -hmm. Yahweh's son and that there's only one Yahweh or one Elohim and his name is Yahweh our Heavenly Father. And I also pray that we all would become sponges and that we just absorb the word spoken and let it do its purging Hallelujah. it's changing our lives to think and to believe in line with the Torah yes. and the prophets and that anything that is still within us mm -hmm. that we're not aware of that is leaven of the Pharisees, that Yahweh would continue doing the work that he's been doing in purging, in exposing the leaven of the Pharisees. And then it's up to you to accept it or reject it. Hallelujah. Now, I pray that you will not be stiff-necked or stubborn but that you would have a humble spirit and that you would look at all that the Torah says all that the prophets say all that the psalm says mm -hmm. and understand that the second writings does not conflict with the first writings and if you think it does your understanding is not yet as strong in Torah as it should be. Mm -hmm. So Father Yahweh, we bless Amen. you for this Sabbath. We honor you. We praise you. We love you. We worship you. I pray that you would take this word and that you would bless mm -hmm. the body of Messiah with it Hallelujah. and that you would um, emphasize what needs to be emphasized to those that are listening and that they would have eyes to see and ears to hear what thus saith Yahweh. And Father, we worship you. Father, we bless you. And Father, we thank you for this Shabbat as we seek to keep it set apart unto you. If you want to connect with us, we have a website, Yahweh Yeshua Assembly dot com. We have a Facebook page. We have a Facebook group. If you'd like to be part of it, uh, Please join. If you want to connect with me, um, Mark Pulley on Facebook, you can do so. Until next time, Yahweh bless you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you. Yahweh give you great peace. 
Yahweh make a way for you where there seems to be no way. Yahweh strengthen you Hallelujah. to stand in the day of, of adversity, doing all to stand. Stand therefore, having your minds girt about with Yahweh's laws and commandments and instructions. Until next time, be filled with Yahweh's wholeness, peace, and shalom.